Hey everyone, Jack with the Crichton Chronicles. Hi, I'm Kate. And uh, today we're going to review Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 1, Dragonstone. So, first off, just excited that the series is back. Uh, winter looks like it's finally here. And uh, yeah, um, excited. I know we kind of went through a whole process of trying to be able to see it. Uh, thankfully, HBO is free for a week. Uh, and so you can watch this first episode and then get hooked for all those who don't have it because we don't have HBO. So uh, hopefully after this we can find some way to uh, view it. <laughs> but cause I'd like to do some reviews for all the uh, episodes this season. That's uh, one of our favorite shows. So... And uh, I guess just overall, what did you think of the episode, just as a overall base? Overall, I thought it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I think um, they introduced a lot of the characters and as a good stage for the season. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they actually kind of went through most, most of the characters. Most of them, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it did good with setting up the stuff. And uh, uh, not even everybody had lines, per se, but they were there, and they, a lot of them just had little you know, a little screen time and stuff, so, um, it, uh, technically started off really good, um, I feel, mm -hmm. and probably just, uh, to know, it's, I don't know if it's a spoiler or whatnot, but we started off with, um, uh, R.S. Stark, and so, uh, yeah, this was one of your yeah. favorite parts, but, yeah. uh, so we opened up with her, and, you know, Got to see her finally kind of coming more into her own after um, all the, uh, I can't remember the city that they were in. Uh, the, uh, I, I honestly I can't really remember, but with the, the faceless man and whatnot. But, um, and all that training kind of went south. But, uh, yeah, so she's kind of going around and exacting her revenge. Uh, so, and actually when it opened up, I knew, I kind of remember it because it was Walter Frey and stuff, and I was like, they had like the recaps and I was like, oh, I, I remember something happened to him, but I didn't remember what exactly, yeah. which was pretty bad. Cause I think it was towards the end of the season it last was, last yeah. year, season six. But so, and I remember, I think he had like, I think she was, he was fed pie of his like sons or something like yeah. that. And then, you know, so, and then obviously then as you see here, she kind of took over the place and then exact revenge on the whole family, the whole house. And I thought that was really awesome. Yeah, so, that's a great scene. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of jumped around. I think we had, uh, I think it went to, like, Jon Snow and, you know, him and uh, Sansa. And I liked that scene. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of see the dynamic, the power back and forth, play a little bit, the arguments and, you know, stuff sibling like that. Sibling rivalry. Yeah, I like the sibling <laughs> rivalry. And, you know, they're coming from different places in a way. And, you know, she's been through, like, Hell, hell and back. back. Yeah. He may have been to hell and back. True. For true. all we know, because yeah. of <laughs> the other stuff. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, but you know, so Jon Snow kind of held his own and and you know remained you know sure-footed on his belief system and whatnot. And whether that will bite him in the ass or not, because Sansa is right about the other Starks. They all had their principles and sticking hardcore to them and trying to be the noble, honorable way. And they've all kind of yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, met their demise like she warned and stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, and I kind of like that. And then and he had Littlefinger in there. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I kind of like that they show that she's kind of wise to him. Yeah. And, like, isn't really as influenced as maybe once was. Right. You know, she kind of, you know, blows, blows him off. Or yeah, she blows stuff, him off. So. And she kind of knows... Um, where she stand, or where he stands with her, and yeah. she stands with him, and kind of knows his intentions. Yeah. So, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, and uh, yeah, we had uh, even in that other scene, it was uh, I had to write down the name as uh, Liana, I believe, the Mormont, the young new ruler. Um, and I thought she was cool. I always mm -hmm. thought she was cool. I think she was kind of like a highlight from from last season. Yeah. I think it was, and her. Her strength and power and just like guff. <laughs> she's like got a lot of grit yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. She may be young, but she yeah doesn't hold back. <laughs> so and um, yeah, um, so uh, yeah. Then we had the uh, Cersei and Jamie Now um, this was kind of a 
interesting scene. She's kind of plotting out everything and trying to exact maybe not well kind of her revenge I guess I mean because yeah. she views them all as traitors obviously right. And, right. and it's pretty much at this point they're like the last of the Lannisters and you know she's talking about the, the dynasty or whatever and mm-hmm. their, their legacy and so I thought it was really cool they had this whole like map you could kind of see it in the preview trailer uh, like the map of Westeros and yeah. all that I don't know if that's like the legit map that is actually like in books or if it's like a makeshift kind of one that yeah. was for the show tailored i thought i saw someone mention some but i never really researched it sure but like you see how big it is and i think of season six and i'm like they're teleporting they're all of a sudden here here and theon and them are all fuck you know yeah. all of a sudden somewhere else and they're with mother of dragons in fact i don't even know did we see did we see theon no i couldn't remember him or sister because they were yeah. with them Daenerys, I thought, because they met with her in council, in, like, last True. season, like, to pledge themselves, I guess, with yeah. whoever troops, whatever they took, I think, so, but, yeah, so, I think there were some characters that were not in it, uh, surprisingly, um, they were, I think, mentioned, maybe, obviously, yeah. but, um, so, I don't know, I thought the dialogue and everything for up to this point, like, throughout the whole thing was actually really good, and maybe I should just <laughs> wait for that and go through, but, um, you know, they're just pretty much, Cersei is, it sounds like sending out her, you know, her message to, you know, kneel before her, accept her as queen, and, and whatnot, who knows if she would actually honor it and not kill everybody but right, right. <laughs> you know so because she's cray cray so but um yeah so and then we got sam and uh he's at the citadel i believe and so, so. i think that's what they call it and uh so he's kind of just you know he's trying to work his way to learning more about uh dragon glass and and all of that and so he's got the it's like all the knowledge of the ages or whatever it is in that place and so um it uh you know he's trying to get whatever he can to get back to to john and prepare for the white walkers because they know that the uh dragon glass is what can kill them actually and is effective against them so yeah so uh that scene was pretty pretty okay i mean it was i like the way it was done it was that scene was done really well yeah with the editing and like everything yeah. and uh so um yeah i i like that and it kind of you know kind of showed his life what he's doing now yeah. and, what, and he's his just monotonous like yeah just day, day in day, day out, out. Yeah. yeah just that's what his life is and he's you know I don't know. I mean, I guess you got to stop, start at the bottom and whatever. I'm trying to think when he went there last season, and I know he showed up, but it was a good scene, too. They just kind of yeah. ignored him, I think, and walked yeah. away. But, so, you know, um, yeah, I thought that was good. And then we had uh, um, Cersei's and Jamie and, uh, is it Euron? Um, Greyjoy? Theon's uh, uncle? And, um, so, if remembering, he had pretty much killed his brother and taken over um, the Iron Islands, um, and then Theon and his sister. What is her name? I don't know. Oh man, I gotta get that. I uh, forgot. But um, you know, so he was kind of betrayed by them. They took off, and then they went to uh, Daenerys, and so he's pissed, and he's there trying to you know, woo the Queen Cersei and try to, you know, and hook up and, uh, yeah, I thought uh, that was really cool. I thought it was a really good scene as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> I keep saying it's a really good scene. I feel like the whole episode was actually, like, really good. Just a few critiques we'll get to at the end, I guess. Yeah. But, um, you know, so you got him, he's hunting down his, he's hunting them down and hopefully um, trying to, like, you know, trying to Married the queen and whatever and win her hand and so you know uh it's an interesting kind of a plot development i guess that i didn't really think was gonna be a thing uh so yeah, yeah. to me it was kind of new um 
and uh, he promised to get her, you know, to, to, to show his loyalty and stuff. And my guess was, was that he's, uh, my guess was that he was going to be hunting Tyrion, maybe, trying to get here at Tyrion, but I don't know, because Cersei is just like, hardcore, hates him, obviously, because right. blames him for the death of son and father, obviously, which is legit, but right. the other not. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, that was good. Um, speaking of which, like, it made me think because we had a lot of Jamie and Cersei, but there was no Brom. Brom was, like, his right-hand man, his swordsman and stuff, like, and I don't, I'm assuming he's around, but I know, like, in the background details, like, that actor and Cersei, I can't yeah. think of her name, they, like, do not get along or something. So they're, like, right. literally, like, I guess, like, yeah, so they're not yeah. in scenes together and stuff. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting, because I was waiting to see him, but I guess every time Jamie was around, it's pretty oh, much yes. with Cersei, so. <laughs> but, yeah, so. I mean, what would you think? And then and then we have, like, characters we brought in the Clegane and the Brotherhood. Oh, I did not look if it was the Brotherhood. I'm thinking it's the Brotherhood. <laughs> They're like the bandits and yeah. whatnot. And what do you yeah. think of those? I like them, yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it was a good add-in and um, introduction of where he's going to go in the storyline. Yeah. They've kind of had like this shift with Clegane going from just like a brute, like just asshole to uh, <laughs> just maybe an okay but still an asshole. Right. <laughs> I yeah. guess he's yeah. still a, he's still a, a prick. But, like, you know, so, but his shifts and alignments has kind of gone more just screw the the politics and, and any of that crap and just do his own thing, yeah. kind of a deal. And you've seen that throughout some of the seasons, probably, I don't know, starting around four, maybe, I don't remember. But yeah. him and Arya, you know, and, like, I think he helps Sansa, and, mm -hmm. you know. So he's, like, even though he's, like, that way, he's still got that little speck, a little <laughs> pinprick of uh, gold or light yeah. in his heart kind of a thing, so, and, uh, yeah, um, otherwise there was the Aria with the, I don't even know who they were, there's another, like, another Aria scene, but it had Ed Sheeran, <laughs> yes. and so it was, she was just on her way to, yeah, oh yeah, she's Kingsman going to the capital yeah. or whatever, yeah. so, and, um, I, I don't really know Ed Sheeran, um, but I recognize his face because he's like plastered everywhere and yeah. people love him. And I was so. like, who's this group of guys that are really good singers? In the <laughs> yeah, first? I was like, they're singing, yeah. So I thought it was going to be like a bard or something because I was yeah. like, oh, a bard maybe, I guess, if they have that kind of a magical thing in this, but they probably don't. But anyway, <laughs> it made me think of a bard and then it said Sheeran, so I thought that was funny. Yeah. So, but, um, so, you know, she's, Arya's on her way to the capital and um, hopefully she's, you know, she's like a, she's hell bent on revenge, so she thinks she's gonna take out Cersei. Yeah. You know, and and probably Jamie or anybody else she right. she blames. So, um, but um, and then uh, pretty much, you know, you had Sam again and stuff. He's finding stuff in the library. He decides to pretty much sneak stuff out and uh, a book from like a locked location, and um, he has a run in actually with Jorah. And, um, yeah, uh, it was very kind of briefish, and yeah. but he kind of discovers, I guess, that Dragonstone has this possible surplus of dragon glass that they used, the, I think it was Targaryens, used where they didn't really realize what the, its use was. They kind of used it as adornment for armor and just whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, um, yeah, I thought that was... That was interesting. Um, everything kind of pointed to Dragonstone, and yeah. um, uh, even Cersei, and stuff, like Jamie's thought that that's where the, she would go first. That's where she, Daenerys was born, right. like, and that's where they would return to, and you know. So, and then finally we got to like the scene of Daenerys, and mm -hmm. basically, you know, Mother of Dragons returning home, and uh, that was that was good too. Um, so, I mean, yeah, they, I think, and that's where I found out, like, uh, towards the end, there was, like, that scene was interesting just because there was, like, no, no real dialogue um, until, like, the very end. The very last, yeah. Yeah, and during it, I had, like, forgotten, but it looked like that's where Stannis had 
perhaps. Like, it did look very, yeah, like, the that's whole where he held out. Up, what, yep. Yeah, that table and everything, and with Melisandre the pillars, or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe it's not Melisandre, but uh, whoever the Red Witch is or whatever. Right. Can't think of her name exactly, but it just, she wasn't in this, no. actually. No. Come to think of it. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, so, what were you, some of your favorite scenes? Uh, definitely the opening scene with Arya. Um, right, actually, right. all of Arya's scenes. I really enjoyed um, her emergence into Season 7. Uh, I am very curious to see where she's going to go. Where do you think she's going? I'm not sure. Yeah? Yeah. I, I also like those scenes. Um, the opening scene was great. Uh, I was already kind of wondering how they're going to kind of, like, like rope you in. Right. You know? Yeah. So, and, I mean, they do pretty good with it. I still remember the first episode and Bran getting shoved out the window. And I was like, if I was I was already kind of hooked. But, I, like, that's why I was, like, yeah. I was, like, super hooked. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I got to see this. So, and, uh, so, yeah, that scene with the Walder Frey um, and the House Frey and stuff with Arya, the revenge stuff was awesome. Yeah. It was... The scene was really well done, and and yeah, I, I still don't quite understand how. I mean, the stuff she's learned from the Faceless Man or whatever or whatnot, how how it works, yeah. like how everybody just sees you know your entire shape. It's like a shapeshifter yeah, basically. basically. So yeah. and so she's obviously learned enough to be able to do that, mm -hmm. you know. So and um, so I don't know. I I think she'll. She'll get around. I, I guess I feel like she. I don't know uh, that other scene that she was in. Mm -hmm. I was worried that I still am kind of worried. Like I, yeah. it was like there was like this undertone just because you just know the series. Right. Like You're these like, guys oh, are geez. not gonna be good. No. One like little girl like teen like. With, I like, thought for sure, honestly, when she guys. went in and they offered her the rabbit right away, I was like, oh, oh no, and she was yeah. hesitant too. Yeah. But. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Obviously, she doesn't want to trust anyone. Right, and like, who right. are these guys? I'm surprised she even bothered stopping. I guess, but yeah. So, yeah, that was something that, and who knows, but it's like I feel like I could see some potential there. But you could see she was like so hypersensitive and hyper aware that she was like, you know, checking all where all the weapons were, yeah, and like getting the bearings of where who was and everything. So she was like ready or. But then she started drinking. So. Well, yeah, but she was hesitant on that, too. Yeah, she true. wasn't sure. But then she was like, oh, oh this no. is good. <laughs> like, get crunk. I don't know. So, yeah. But, uh, so, that was, uh, yeah, interesting. But uh, I thought that was really good. And, um, yeah, so both of her scenes were really good. Yeah. And hopefully that group of people, how they interacted, that they're good. I, I don't know. I know they were going to keep the peace because of what happened at the house for a and obviously she was the cause of it or whatever but I like that when she like you know said you know she, what was she doing out there blah blah and she's like going to kill the queen yeah you know I was like and they're all oh, like laugh at her and, yeah and she's like laughs a little bit with yeah. them but yeah she's, she's like, like I'm dead yeah, serious no. bitches yeah. <laughs> and with her ability I mean I I wouldn't doubt right being yeah. able to because there hasn't been any characters that can actually identify a shapeshifter kind of thing. Right. There's been some, like, magical sprinklings of creatures and, like, yeah. in season one or two or whatever, I think it was maybe two, where there was, like, the warlocks mm -hmm. and, like, they could do illusions and, like, all this crazy stuff, but, and then there's witches, obviously, and whatnot, but, so, but nobody that have, has yet, I don't think, seen, like, the ability to see through that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It depends on how that goes, but, um, uh, my other favorite scene was uh, Cersei and Euron with yeah. Jamie Lannister because that whole interaction and that actor at first, like in the f last season when he showed up, I mean, he very limited lines and stuff. He yeah. just showed up out of the blue, killed his brother or right. whatever, and then took over and then, you know, was Theon, I think, was thinking he was going to become king or something or thing. I don't yeah. really quite remember. Yeah, but, did, yeah. but then, you know, obviously they, they went with Euron, and he's character book-wise, I read last season, like, he's kind of a big character, like, that's not quite represented so good. Sure. Like, he's supposed to, I don't know if he has a patch, but I thought he did, but under it, he's got, like, got a blue eye or different color eye. Something to, like, because he went and out in the seas, but, like, ran into, like, mystical kind of, like, okay. like, 
adventure kind of thing huh. and like different things so he's supposed to have this air of like that you know like yeah. like he's dangerous but he's also like got that magic kind of hmm. tint yeah you don't really tone. get that in the you don't really all. get that yeah. so I don't know so I think I'll like him a lot more in the book but just character wise mm-hmm. but like this actor uh, I thought he did really well mm-hmm. like I thought he played him really well the interactions between them all was great um, it was pretty much Jamie and you know Euron like just slamming each other and bashing and poking each other and and all that and uh, I I would have to say Euron kind of came on top a little bit especially oh, yeah. at the end yes. <laughs> so and uh, like I said I I think his little gift to uh, Cersei will be potentially trying to hunt down I'm assuming Tyrion but I don't you know that yeah. was my guess yeah. so I mean I don't know what else he could like offer her. Like, he already tried one. Yeah, because he's already got all the men there. Yeah. And, like, so that army and then himself, but, right. you know. And it might not be so much, especially in the series, that he's not somebody who's, like, sailed. Because he has sailed all the seas and all this stuff, and, you know, so it's kind of like a renowned thing. But, yeah. like, in here it's kind of, like, kind of downplayed, I think. So maybe just briefly mentioned, you know, mentioned. Obviously him himself yeah. <laughs> mentioned it, and she said he had no, you know, yeah. new humility kind of thing. Yeah. Not being humble, I guess. But, uh, so, yeah, um, and I think that was kind of, uh, that was there anything that you didn't like? Um, well, kind of. I mean, there was, like, the end scene for, uh, Daenerys and the, the, um, her going home. Um, I personally obviously really love her as a character, but I Your always... favorite. Yeah, she is my favorite. <laughs> but, I don't know, it's, it's, she... It was so grandiose of a scene that it was like, um, I feel like they play on the fact that she is a favorite character so much, yeah. and it just felt like it was very over the top, you know, dramatic. Let's walk, watch her walk, you know, come in from to the beach and watch her walk all the way up um, to the gates and all the way up uh, the walkway or whatever, um, all the way to the inner I like the last scene a lot sure but I felt like it was way too it was like a wedding march almost uh feel yeah. to it all yeah it's true and I kind of feel like I guess in light defense of it yeah is that it's the fact that some of that's probably intentional because it's her home and where she was sure. born and so it is this like monumentous momentous like uh, monumental, like yeah. emotional, yeah. like event to her, sure. and like to come yeah. home, and so, and and like, cause at first, first I was like, Tyrion's not fucking talking, he's no, not whatever, no you know. Doing so I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I would think that he would, but it's just maybe, obviously, he has the tact and foresight to realize that like this is a very powerful moment for her. Yeah. And so, yeah, I guess the scene, and I do like the end scene, and I like how the episode cut out yeah. and everything. I thought that was good. But I agree that, in a way, that they, they seem to capitalize on her being a favorite character. Totally. And they have throughout most of the series. Yeah. So you'll have a lot of episodes where it's either her or her dragons are all of a sudden out of the blue and they're saved the day, or they do something gr- crazy, or... She, like with whether it's the pyre that she comes out of or that which was great in the first season stuff like that and like you know when she first burned and had the eggs and whatever and but you know then the, the hut or then when she flies back in the city after being gone and you know save the day last minute they just like to really like end on her a lot right and you know i i don't know i think it's kind of like i don't know i think it's kind of like hokey in a way that because it's more of a, it's not more of a story thing, it's more of a uh, marketing kind of yeah. a ploy, you know, with the directors and, and whatnot, the showrunners. Right, but, right. You know, so, but... I did like when she got up into the, the tower, room, the room, and yeah. what what's the name of her uh, army and his name? I know Grey Worm. Leader. Grey Worm, well, yeah, yeah, Grey Worm. And he went to go up, and then um, the other woman, like, I forgot her name, too. That might be Melisandre. Okay. Because I don't, I thought that was the Red Witch, but I don't remember. Oh, okay. Well, and she, like, holds him back. Like, no, oh, this, yeah. is, this is her moment for, to go for into. To, uh, to do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I can check. I think her name was Melisandre. But, uh, yeah, anyway. 
So, um, yeah, uh, I agree though that that was kind of like a great it's a scene. A little bit over general. top. Yeah, it's like over the top, but not quite. Like, not it, was, it was subtle, yeah, yeah. but you just kind of like. It's, it's because you know the history of everything yeah, how they her character. utilize her yeah, character and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, at least they've stopped. I mean, this is because of the actress, like with the nudity and stuff, too. Right. They kind of like a first season or two was like a lot, but then she, <laughs> this was, of course, her as an actress. Was right. Like, no she more, because like, I'm, I'm top yeah. dog. Everybody loves this character. Like, so yeah. she got a lot of clout or whatever, and she could kind of, you know, maneuver around contracts. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. Um, I guess I had one scene, I know this is running kind of long, sorry, but um, it was uh, two that I was kind of iffy about. One was with uh, Jorah with Sam, like Sam was picking up the food trays or whatever it was and then, you know, they they zoom in and whatever and it was like a scare tactic, like Jorah's yeah. arm comes out and he's got the gray scale and and all that, and he's asking if the Mother of Dragons has shown arrived or, or, or whatever. Um, and I guess I just didn't like the fact that Jorah's like, who knows what state he's in right. mentally or whatever, but he's kind of more of an honorable person too. And like the fact that he just would like do that, right. like what was he going to do? Was he going to grab him? Right. Was he going to, because he knows that Grayscale you can you don't want to touch it right and right. so he could pass it on at least to my knowledge what i remember and so he'd always have it covered or whatever or stay away from people so at first i was like why the hell is he even there but then i was like well i guess that's like the hub of knowledge that you know he yeah. was told to find a cure and so he went and that probably would be where you'd want to go and yeah. hopefully they can find a cure for it but i just i thought it didn't make sense i guess that he would reach out and like knock over the book whatever it was it was just yeah. it seemed like a weird dumb scare tactic to introduce the character uh you know in the first episode or whatever just barely you know you could obviously tell who it was but i just i don't know and the other was i really liked the clegane and the brotherhood stuff um you had the three people you had the um uh, thoris and beric and um they were you know their banter as well it was like you know back and forth and it was good and they talk about you know their ideologies and just everything else and they talk about the one god and whatnot and i liked a lot of that and um essentially uh there was this part though where um thoris asked him to look in the fire or whatnot and so you know clegane is i was i was not sure what to really expect i right. thought he was just gonna try and be like you know overcome your fear kind of thing because he hates fire because of his past and stuff so but the hound you know, went over and looked into the fire, and, you know, and, you know, at first he gives a snippy remark, but then he was like, keep looking, basically. keep looking, and then he does, and then he's like, what do you see, and then Clegane, like, starts talking about ice and the wall, and, right. and the army of dead, and all this stuff, and it was kind of like, like, I don't know if he was, like, in a trance, or if Thoris is kind of like, like the Red Witch, where he can kind of make people see visions, yeah. but he seemed just kind of like hypnotized really instant. yeah and like out of the blue so right. I'm like I thought at first he was just gonna mess with them and like just and then just say something weird off the wall kind of thing and like like I see you know burning wood or whatever you know right. after that just kind of repeat that kind of sentiment but instead it was like he was almost like a seer like and I know the Red Witch could like show people stuff in fire and stuff Yeah. but they've I don't think ever said that Thoris had any kind of power like that he can bring people back he resurrects like Beric all the time and that was a kind of a point of contention between Clegane and Beric and all three of them really but you know so I don't know uh, I think those were kind of the the scenes that I kind of had issues with again with the Mother of Dragons too at the end but yeah. like in the end I, uh, I thought compared to a lot of episodes last season oh, yeah. that this one was a lot more fine-tuned and better um, just with the dialogue and there was no like at least at this point weird teleporting stuff yeah. like you know they had like characters had knowledge through the grapevine I guess yeah. I don't know how fast that travels and because the time frame always seems kind of off to me in like this series but like how much time has passed and you see Sam's kids older 
and like right. you know and this and that so it's like I don't know how much time has actually lapsed and how long it takes for information to travel but you know but there was no teleporting or anything weird like that right so uh, in fact I thought when they got to Dragonstone I was worried like okay did Jamie and or did Euron or whatever just happen to know because he suspected or predicted that she would go there did they, are they all of a sudden going to be there right because like traps I'm like why are they walking up alone and I, why did why is Dragonstone empty like, I don't know nobody took it over after I know there's a lot of stuff going on but it just I don't know it seemed kind of it weird it was weird. just completely empty yeah so I don't really know what's up with that but um yeah so but I felt like overall it was a really really great uh premiere episode yeah. Good. And like I said before, we talked about it, introduced a lot of the characters. There was a few missing, but yep. a lot of them were in there, whether they had in many lines or just had like a scene or two. And, I mean, you they know. even had Bran in there, which I don't think we really Oh, yeah, we never really much. talked about Bran, yeah. But, but Bran know, and, that's... yeah, Bran coming in and then, yeah, and getting past the wall yeah. from the uh, other side. And, um, and uh, the fact that the the Night King or whatever like uh, in his army like the White Walkers now yeah. and they have giants I don't think we've seen no White Walker giants or undead giants so and there was a few of them yeah so, yeah there was at least three <laughs> yeah three at least so yeah. I thought that was cool too yeah. that was a great scene there was a lot of great scenes the dialogue was good I think the interaction between characters were good yeah and so I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes up next I guess yeah. so um. Anything but else it's you want to add? Yeah. less seasons, right? Or not less seasons, less episodes, right? This it, season? Yes, it's it's only like ooh, seven. I think so. I think it's only maybe seven episodes, and the reasoning was that they were going to have longer episodes um, and add more. And so I was kind of joking that for this episode, because it was like sixty-eight minutes, and yeah. I I think, and usually they're like fifty-four to sixty. Yeah. And sometimes they're a little more, but either way, I was like. <laughs> Despite really liking the scene and thinking it was really well done, like, it was like five minutes of Sam cleaning human excrement. <laughs> and like, that's pretty much what it was. Yeah. Like, I'm like, there's your extra footage. This is where our budget went. <laughs> Sam cleaning up shit. Literally. And literally. And so there you go. I hope you like it. So seven episodes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, that's, yeah, I don't know. So... And we've got just these last two seasons, so I think so. Wow, yeah. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to uh, the rest of the season, uh, episode two. Mm -hmm. I always avoid the the you know next time on the Game of Thrones, the previews oh, yeah. for the yeah. next episode. I always avoid those, so I don't have any hints of what's going on. Um, so yeah, um, you? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. So uh, yeah, uh, what about you? Uh, have you been following the Game of Thrones? Uh, do you have a particular season you like more, um, or the most? Uh, any characters you like a lot? Uh, did you watch this premiere? And uh, what did you think of it? Did you think it was well done? Did you think the story and dialogue and everything was tighter? Um, did you have any kind of critiques about any of the scenes? Um, any scenes that you liked a lot? Um, yeah, and where do you think, like, you know, the characters and story may go? Yeah. So, kind of curious, uh, let us know in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, uh, again, Jack. And I'm Kate. And uh, thanks for joining us in this review. I know it's kind of long. I think once we kind of get it down, we'll kind of narrow it down. Maybe I can figure out a better method of going through, because it's first review, oh, yeah. like ever. So, yeah. so yeah, but I appreciate you watching. And, um, yeah, if you like the video, give a thumbs up. Uh, click subscribe for more content. Again, I'm hoping to do, you know, hopefully we can do more each episode this season and maybe other shows or who knows. So, and, uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, check out some more videos wherever they're going to appear on the screen here. <laughs> and uh, until next time, take care. Bye.